good day to you each, my beautiful and wonderful people on this wonderful Wednesday. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It's your favorite girl, Simply Michelle, the host with the most. And I have an incredible episode lined up today. But first, head on over to Amazon and purchase your copy of one of my books, Love, A Misconstrued Word, Created on Purpose for a Purpose, and the Dear Diary Trilogy. You can also pick up my journals, Journaling the Journey with Jesus, Seasons Change, and Sweet Dreams. If you're looking for a mental health coach to walk with you on your journey to greatness, book your appointment now on my website at createdonpurposeforpurpose.godaddysites.com because you matter and so does your mental health. You got a story you want to tell? your personal testimony, or maybe some biblical truth explains how the Holy Spirit gave it to you, let's talk about it and let me help you publish and bring your words to life at createdonpurpose314 at gmail.com. Now, do me a solid and hit that follow button and be sure to tell me what you think of today's episode. And without further ado, let's dive into today's episode, Love Yourself Enough. You have made my whole being. You formed me in my mother's body. I praise you because you made me in an amazing and wonderful way. What you have done is wonderful. I know this very well. And that comes from Psalms 139, 13 through 14, the New Century Version. I wanted to take a moment today and just kind of give you a snippet from my book, Love a Misconstrued Word, one of the chapters that is titled Love Yourself Enough because we don't get that very often. Because here's the thing, we're in a world full of stereotypes and we have this mindset that we must uphold how society thinks we should look. We think that the exterior has to look a certain way in order to be accepted. We crave the attention of other people because we feel that what other people think of us is more important than what God thinks of us and what we think of ourselves. Now, Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Many people will say and argue that there's nothing wrong with enhancing yourself to look good. And and, and there's not. But when you begin to like start spending money and when you're doing it for the wrong reason, that's where the problem comes in at. You know, we, we're trying to fit into a world that God created many of us to stand out in. So we're not really using that, what he gave to us naturally, to our full potential. And what I mean by that is, you know, you hear how people go out here, they they go out here with these BBLs and, you know, buying breasts to make them bigger. Why do you think people do that? It's for the attention. It's not because they, you know, feel that, you know, this is what it's going to take to make me feel good. If they do truly, truly believe that, it's because they have a self-respect issue, a self-esteem issue, And it's because they don't love themselves the way God created them. They don't feel they're good enough. And this is why many people are doing it. And and I got to be honest, when you get on social media and you see people, you know, exposing themselves, oftentimes I get on, all I see is breasts hanging out. You know, women that make a post, you know, and oh, I look good today. And, and all, all they see is boobs. That's all you see. Just just cleavage, just everything hanging out. You know, you see the hips and the and the, the thighs and, you know, you see the, your, your bottom just hanging out. You know, what part of that makes you feel good? Because nine times out of ten, if you're trying to attract a man, 
That's not what he going to take home to his mama. Majority won't. Anyway, a real man, that's not what he's taking home to mama. And I'm not forgetting about the guys. Y'all walking around here purposely with, you know, the gray sweatpants. Let's keep it all the way real. Everybody done decided to grow a beard. Let's let's be honest. I've gotten on social media where I done seen guys, you know, wearing these real loose shorts, kind of like boxer shorts, not the briefs, but like the shorts. And they have their private area bouncing around purposely so that you can see how big it is. Let y'all know I'm going to keep it all the way real on here. You cannot say that you love yourself enough to expose parts of yourself that's not meant for everybody. We think it's okay to be able to expose body parts and enhance body parts, but nobody ever talks about how they want to change their attitude. Nobody ever talks about how they want to change their heart. Nobody ever want to talk about how they want to heal and learn. Nobody ever talks about finally taking off the band-aid to a wound that has been sitting there just dormant for years to get the healing that they need from the inside out. You know how you can go um, and have a procedure done per se. And most times... Uh, the doctor will tell you, I did not close the womb. I need you guys to catch what I'm saying. I did not close the womb because this sort of womb has to be healed from the inside out. And the thing is, when we allow God in and we allow God to heal us from the inside out, we know what we carry, we know who we are, and we know whose we are, which means we won't have to do half of the things that we do now to draw attention. Why? Because the light of God will then dwell within us to where that light within us will begin to spew on the outside and people will see the real beauty of who you are. I'm not a big makeup person. I don't wear makeup every day. I know there are some women that won't leave their house unless they have on makeup. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But I'm not a huge fan of makeup, but I love my hair and I like to keep my hair done. You know what I mean? So with me, yes, I want to be able to leave out the house with my hair looking decent, put on some decent clothes. That's going to cover my cleavage. You know, that's going to cover my hips, my thighs and my bottom. You know what I mean? Because I now recognize who I am and whose I am. And I recognize the love and the respect that I have for myself. Case in point, I've always been a fluffy girl. And I'm a tall girl. I'm 5'10". And so I never really thought too much about being a fluffy girl when I was younger. I feel that my parents did an excellent job on making me to, you know, feel loved, not just by them, but myself, to love myself, you know, to respect myself, to honor myself, because that's how God loves me. God honors me. This is why he tells us that our bodies are a temple. They're precious. He made them specifically for a reason. It's to take care of them. Yes, if we're overweight, there's nothing wrong with losing weight to be healthier. But if you want to lose weight to be accepted, 
That's not the goal that God had in mind for that. You, you, you see what I mean? Because many people that I coach um, or just kind of talking to or ministering to, uh, I've even seen it on social media where people have said, literally, you know, when I was a bigger person, I wasn't popular. Nobody wanted to be my friend. Nobody talked to me. Nobody liked me. But when I lost the weight, I have so many people in my life now. People are my friends. People are, you know, asking me out on dates. You know, I, I, I get to do things that I've never got to do before because of people. When you have the light of God and you have, you know, allow God to heal you and, and, and prune you and take you through certain processes, then you begin to understand that what everybody else say doesn't even matter. Because here's the thing, what God speaks to us is true. He said it in the scripture, you have made my whole being, you formed me in my mother's body. I praise you because you made me in an amazing and wonderful way. There is nothing that God does that is not wonderful and amazing. We used to say it all the time when we were younger, God don't make no junk and he don't. So what other people say about us is strictly an opinion. God only states facts. And when your light began to shine, when you go through the healing, when you recognize who you truly are, then what other people think, it ain't going to matter. And, and, and because your light will begin to shine so bright, people will have no other choice but to come to you. They're drawn by the light. And it's not you by yourself. It's because of the, 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 the Holy Spirit that dwells within you. That's what's drawing. And, and, and then we have to be able to use wisdom and discernment to know who we are letting in our lives because not every person that's drawn to you is for you. Right now, I am very particular on who I hang out with and who I let in my space, let alone my house. Because people carry spirits. And, and let me just say this. When, when you understand that people carry spirits, you have to understand that it's not just their spirit and whatever spirit, spirit is dwelling within them. It's the people that they hang around as well. Because spirits ain't got no issue moving from one person to the next. And so let's say you have this person, you know, whether it's a friend, a family member, a co-worker, um, you know, somebody that you're trying to date, this person, okay, this person is struggling. They're dealing with some spirits that they need to take a hold on and, and, and you know, move away from. But then you don't know who they're with and hanging out with. When they're not with you and what type of spirits that person carry. It's just like a soul tie. When you find yourself, oh, I like this individual and you begin to sleep with people. And I'm going to say people because that's exactly what I mean. Because you begin to speak to sleep with these people. You are not only marrying this individual in the spirit. You are also connected to the other people that they slept with if they had not broken those soul ties beforehand. So not only are you sleeping with them, you sleeping with other people. If that person done slept with 10 other people and never took the time to break those soul ties from that person, you are now gaining what that person was carrying. 
And you're going to have to be able to break it. And then you want to walk around here trying to figure out why you depressed. You know why this spirit of lust is all up over you. You want to know why you want to go out here and, and drink now when you know that ain't even your personality. You're trying to fit into something because of what you allowed to come into your presence. It's not to say you're better than anybody. But you have to recognize the spirit that you carry each day. And your oil should not be that cheap. With me, it was kind of like even though I knew my parents taught me at a young age that they loved me, you know, that I was, you know, beautiful the way that I was, you know, 5'10", fluffy girl, you know what I mean? I've always been the tallest girl out of all of my friends. But as I got older, people started bringing that out, making me notice it. Kind of like, okay, girl, you know what? You tall. Don't no man want no tall girl. If you, if you lose about 50 pounds, you will have people flocking to you. You pretty to be a big girl. I w I've never been told, you know what I mean, that I was ugly. I've, it was always about my weight. And it's sad because when I do go out, I have guys, you know, trying to talk to me. I have guys looking at me. I would like to think, and I already know, you know, most of them, yes, they're looking at what they see and what they think they can get. But there are some that sees me, Michelle, for who God created her to be. God ain't crazy, y'all. We have to let God do his part. And that's one of the issues. We don't want God to do his part. We want to do things, you know, thinking it's going to make, you know, we go out here, we buy the lace fronts and we buy the, the lashes and we put on layers of makeup and we say we, we want to do this so we can feel more beautiful. No, you're doing that. You're trying to mask who you truly are. But if you let your natural beauty take place, you have no idea what may be in line because we think that if the right people accept us, that's not good enough. We must remember we live in this world. We are not a part of it, especially those of us that decided to choose God. So you can't say that you're choosing God and then turn around and act like the ways of the world and how the world do things. You have to know who you are. The scripture says, he who gains wisdom and good sense loves, they preserve his own soul. He who keeps understanding will find good and prosper. To love yourself is to show appreciation to God for what he has done. He makes everything great, especially me and you. We must understand that we cannot love anyone else until we first love ourselves. How do we embrace it, you know, love from other people if we can't embrace the love for ourselves? And again, do we think that we won't be popular? Why would you want to be popular on false pretenses? Again, if you're wanting to lose weight, that's fine. Be a healthier you. But majority of the time, people are not losing weight for that. I, I don't know how many times, you know, I've seen people talking about taking this, this, these different medicines to lose weight, having these surgeries to look better and appeasing to people. Those who fully walk in alignment of God will be able to see who you truly are. And that's what you want people to see. 
God's love for us should reflect the love that we carry for ourselves. God wants us to feel good about ourselves. He wants us to look good for ourselves. But he doesn't want us to alter ourselves from the original blueprint that he created. It was a reason. If God wanted us all to be thin and beautiful and look a certain way and all of us to be short, all of us to be tall, you know, one skin color, you know, built a certain way, then what would be the purpose of being unique? We are all beautifully and amazingly and wonderfully made in a unique fashion. There's a reason he made us that way. If we look at the scripture in Revelation 22 and 17, it says, The spirit and the bride say, come. Let the one who hears this say, come. Now, here's the part I want y'all to catch. Let whoever is thirsty come. Whoever wishes may have the water of life as a free gift. Now, we talk about, oh, they thirsty. They just looking for somebody to look at us. You know what I mean? If you that thirsty, go to Christ. Let him do what he needs to do on the inside. Because as I got older and people started saying things to me, yes, I began to lose my self-esteem. Why? Because here again, there's more than one person saying this to me. So now, rather than going by what I know, I'm like, well, you know, I'm trying to fit in. You know, everybody's telling me I can't get a real man because a real man don't like a big girl. I've had these words spoken to me and over my life by people that are family members. Ain't no man ever going to want you because you big. But one thing I know that if I keep my trust in God, it's one man, one, and that's all it takes, that will love me as I am. And when I'm ready to lose weight, he's going to support me. He's going to walk with me on that journey. It's not going to be he's coming at me telling me, oh, well, you got no, he's going to walk with me on that. And if I never decide to do it, he's going to love me how God created him to love me, all of me. But the thing is, we don't look at it like that. So I began to believe these people. They shot my self-esteem down on things that had never in my life bothered me. You know, I ended up in relationships first and foremost that I knew full well I shouldn't have been in. But now it's because of what people are saying. And it's, it was almost like you're trying to prove a point. You see what I mean? So now it's like, okay, you, you need to do something about this. Ain't no man going to want you. I've been verbally abused, mentally abused, emotionally abused. And physically abused by men. So I'm thinking, you know what? Maybe you do need to do something. But that's not what God said. He, you're beautiful as you are. It's going to be that one man that's going to see you how I see you. The outside means absolutely nothing, y'all. Because when we die, these bodies are shells. They're not going with us. Why do we put so much emphasis on what the outside look like and don't care on what the inside is looking like? That's what God is seeing. God is looking at the heart. And I got to tell you, you might look good on the outside, but where's your heart? You might look good on the outside, but where's your mind frame at? You might look good on the outside, but how are you treating other people? How are you treating yourself? That's what God is looking at. This is why he tells us that our bodies are a temple. Are we taking care of them? 
This is why I say there's nothing wrong with eating healthier. There's nothing wrong with losing weight. But when you're doing it for the wrong reason, that's where the problem comes in at. So if you're walking around thirsty for that attention, seek God. That's the only advice I could give to you. Because he's truly the only one that's going to make you feel better as a person. And everything that he's put in you is going to come out on the outside. But you have to start with God. There is nobody on the face of this earth that can make you feel like God makes you feel. I don't care what nobody tell you. They can tell you any and everything you want to hear. That's what people do. God going to give you truth. Whether you want to hear it or not. And at the same time, because he's so good like that and he's so amazing and he's so patient, he going to love on you at the same time. This is somebody that's been through it. This is somebody that struggled with things that people were speaking over to their life until I allowed God in. Don't let the enemy rob you of something beautiful because you are beautiful to God. Take that money and invest it in yourself rather than enhancing body parts, rather than buying wigs, rather than going out here, making sure that you got the right beard and, you know, the right uh, sweatpants and everything. Invest your money in yourself. Open your business. Find your purpose and invest it there and let God lead you. Because I promise you, if you allow God in, there is no way that you can think any less of yourself. It's time to put you first. Love yourself enough to not want to fit in because you were created to stand out. Well, you guys, that concludes today's episode. I thank you so very much for tuning in. I truly hope you found encouragement, motivation, guidance, and inspiration to live a life aligned with your true purpose. Again, I am your favorite girl, Simply Michelle, the host with the most. Don't forget to tune in each Wednesday morning for your midweek encouragement. And remember, you are unique and there's a purpose waiting to be fulfilled within you. Don't let it go unnoticed or unexplored. Now go have a great day on purpose. See you next time.